everyone. Uh, good afternoon. And, you know, nearly 10 months ago today, we stood in this exact same spot following the Supreme Court's terrible decision in Dobbs. And we did two things. We said that as Massachusetts, we are all going to come together and work together to protect women's reproductive freedom. And we did that. And the second thing we did... And we're going to talk more today about how we need to continue to do that. But we made that commit, uh, commitment, all of us here, to you 10 months ago. We also warned you that this was just the beginning. We warned you that this was the start, because extremist anti-abortion activists and politicians have been working at this for decades, trying to, at every turn, chip away at women's freedom and our reproductive rights. The Dobbs decision was a win for them. Abortion bans went into effect in more than a dozen states, affecting over 20 million Americans, people who need access to essential care. But clearly Dobbs wasn't enough. And what you saw is a uh, continuing step in their endless crusade to undermine medical and scientific research and expertise, to further marginalize particularly women in this country, and to take us backwards. And their latest crusade took them to a single federal court judge in Amarillo, Texas, handpicked, uh, appointed by Donald Trump, who has a history of making decisions, radical decisions, to restrict women's freedom. And he last week, as you saw, blocked the FDA's approval of mifepre mifeprestone. Now, the ruling is paused, as we know, for seven days to allow the government time to appeal, which they have. But when it goes into effect, it could ban mifeprestone nationwide, even in states like Massachusetts where abortion is legal, or at least that's the concern. And that, of course, would have devastating consequences for so many. Mifeprestone has been a safe and effective FDA-approved medication for over 20 years. For over 20 years. Think about that. It's the gold standard in medication abortion care. It's been used safely for decades as well for miscarriage management, to treat lupus, to reduce the risk of ulcers, among many other medical uses. This is the drug that we're talking about. This political intervention into basic medical care hurts women at what can be a difficult and heartbreaking time putting those experiencing pregnancy loss through greater discomfort, greater pain, and in some cases threatening their lives. It harms patients, undermines medical expertise, and takes away freedom. It's an attempt to punish, to shame, to marginalize women. It's unnecessary. It's terrible. It is terrible. And it is I would say unprecedented, but for the fact that we saw a Supreme Court last year reverse Roe. But the good news here today in Massachusetts is that we are not going to tolerate this. Much like that, much like, much like that day last year, I'm joined by tremendous colleagues in government at the local, state, and federal level, advocates, health care providers, patients, to send a clear message. Abortion will remain safe, legal, and accessible here in Massachusetts. At my request, the University of Massachusetts Amherst agreed to purchase approximately 15,000 doses of Yay. mifeprestone. That's, that's enough, that's sufficient to ensure coverage for well over a year. I am grateful to UMass President Meehan, to Chancellor Sabaswamy, and the entire UMass team who readily agreed and stepped forward, jumping right into action. 
This order was placed before the judge's ruling, and we expect to have the doses in hand this week. We We've also, we've also been in touch, and I thank our HHS Secretary Kate Walsh uh, for being in touch with so many health care providers who have also stepped up to make purchases for patients. I was clear, our team was thinking about this the last few weeks, about what could happen, and there were two things we were going to do. One, we were going to make sure that we had enough mifeprestone here in the state to cover women for as long as they need it. Women in Massachusetts, anyone who needs it. And number two, we were going to make sure that I could sign an executive order to provide protections to prescribers, to providers, to patients here in our state. And so to that end, I just now signed an executive order that confirms that medication abortion, including mifeprestone, remains protected under Massachusetts state law. Last year, in the wake of the Dobbs decision, the Massachusetts State Legislature jumped into action and passed an important SHIELD law, which protects patients and providers from civil or criminal liability for accessing or performing an abortion. Our executive order makes clear that those very protections, thank you, thank you, will also extend to medication abortion in Massachusetts. This means that providers, including pharmacists, can continue to stock and dispense mifeprestone and will continue to protect providers and patients from consequences for accessing this essential care. Our administration is also dedicating a million dollars to support providers contracted with the State Department of Public Health with paying for these doses. The executive order further instructs our Department of Public Health and our Division of Insurance to ensure guidance necessary to implement this order and requires DPH to provide support to public universities and colleges to expedite development and implementation of their medication abortion readiness plans. So I just want to be clear with the people of Massachusetts, abortion, medication abortion will remain safe, legal, and accessible here in the Commonwealth. And, and as governor, I am committed to making sure that we do anything and everything that we need to do here in this state to make sure that in the face of efforts to further undermine, it's hard to believe, but it is happening time and time again, in the face of efforts to continue to undermine women's freedom, equality, justice, so many things that so many people have fought so long for. But in the face of those efforts, our response in Massachusetts is, to go, is going to be to double down for freedom. That's what we're about. That's how we've always led. And that's what you see people stepping forward to do as a collective team in this time. I mentioned the role that the University of Massachusetts Amherst has played. I want to bring forward President of UMass, Marty Meehan. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Healy, for your extraordinary leadership. Today, we're proud to stand alongside Governor Healy and stand up for access to reproductive health care in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The University of Massachusetts was founded in Amherst in 1863 as a land-grant institution. A year before Abraham Lincoln signed the Morrill Act into law, and with that, Morrill Act land-grant universities have a service mission. And UMass has always made a commitment to improving the lives of the people of Massachusetts. Throughout our history, the university has on occasion been asked to mobilize its resources to address a critical need in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Most recently, it was during the COVID-19 pandemic when we erected field hospitals and vaccine clinics and sent medical personnel to the front lines of that crucial effort. Last week, Governor Healy called upon UMass Amherst to mobilize, this time to help protect safe and legal medical abortions for women in Massachusetts. I applaud the governor and her administration for their swift, decisive action. And when that time came, Chancellor Subhaswamy did not hesitate. Preserving access to reproductive health care 
is consistent with our values as a university. It supports It supports equity and economic mobility for women, and it also supports racial equality because we know that restrictions on reproductive health care disproportionately impact women of color. We were in this position to help because our students at Amherst last year made clear that equitable access to these medicines was a priority, and they pushed for progress, and because of their effort, and those UMass Amherst students may now have helped preserve access to pre reproductive health for all women in Massachusetts. This is, um, this is Chancellor Subhaswamy, who's been a fabulous chancellor for 10 years, and this is his last year as our leader at Amherst. But it's also fitting that in one of his final acts, after a decade of incredible leadership, Chancellor Subhaswamy demonstrated such leadership and clarity of vision on behalf of his campus and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He is an outstanding leader. Please welcome Kumble Subitswabi, the Chancellor of Mass Amherst. Marty, thank you very much for that introduction as well as for your leadership and governor. We are so proud to be in a state where you are the extraordinary leader that you are. <laughs> Last year, as you had mentioned, the University of Massachusetts Amherst the campus that I've had the privilege to lead for the last 11 years made the decision to begin offering medication absorption care on our campus through University Health Services. We made this decision in the same way we do with many important campus decisions in close collaboration with our students. We wanted to eliminate any obstacles UMass Amherst students faced in accessing this safe and effective medication. We have extensive gynecological services available on campus and this was a logical next step in advancing our goal of providing comprehensive reproductive health care to our students. When governor's, the governor's team called last week, the campus had already obtained the necessary REMS, or risk evaluation and mitigation strategy, approval needed to acquire the medicine on behalf of the Commonwealth. As the Massachusetts Land Grant University, this is certainly a part of our mission to serve the public. We conduct cutting edge research to help solve the problems of tomorrow and educate the best and brightest of the state, all while constantly evolving to take, take on the greatest challenges facing the Commonwealth. Oh, I lost my place, but uh, we'll get back to that one here. Hold on one second. Long and short of it <laughs> is when we were called upon to place an order for 15,000 doses of mifeprestone. Uh, we were in the right position to do it, but along with our team and working with the governor's team, we were able to mobilize within 24 hours. This is unheard of for government circles, I would say. And within 24 hours, we were able to place the order, and uh, as uh, the governor mentioned, we are expecting the order in uh, sometime this week. And so we're really proud to be of service again to the Commonwealth, and we're again proud of our entire leadership here and, and, and our, our governor. Uh, Mara Healy, uh, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, much. Okay. so I am glad to be here with Governor Healy, with Congresswoman Presley, with Congresswoman Trahan, uh, with Attorney General Campbell, with Senate President Spilka, with so many fierce advocates who are working to protect a woman's right to an abortion and a woman's right to make decisions about her own body. I want to make two points. The first is the immediate fight is not over. A judge has made a politically motivated decision to override doctors, patients, and medical experts and block access to critical medications. Today, we collectively are saying loud and clear not on our watch. Thanks to the leadership of Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and Attorney General Campbell, and our leaders at UMass Amherst, Mifepristone is and will remain safe, legal, and available in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Since the Supreme Court issued its decision in Dobbs, 
Massachusetts has stepped up to protect women's rights. Our legislature has passed sweeping laws to preserve reproductive freedom and to protect the providers who will deliver essential health care services. And I want to say thank you to Ron and to Karen. Thank you for getting this done. We owe you. And now, today, those protections will be expanded to ensure that Massachusetts doctors, nurses, and other health professionals can care for their patients without fear of prosecution. And patients can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that this medication, which so many will rely on, will, for the immediate future, remain accessible in the Commonwealth. The Biden administration is also committed to protecting the right to an abortion. There are many steps that they can take, and they have begun by immediately appealing the court ruling. So we're moving in the short term, but I want to talk about the long term. As the decision in Texas showed, extremists in this country are determined to ban abortion nationwide. They have shown that they will do whatever is necessary, including undoing decades of precedent to try to end access to abortion everywhere. The only way that we will put a stop to this is at the ballot box. We, yes, we need more people in Congress who are willing to make Roe versus Wade the law of the land. This extremist Texas judge reminds us that Roe will be on the ballot in 2024. So to everyone in Massachusetts, I ask you to get mad, to stay mad, and to channel your anger into making real change. In the short run, we will keep medication abortion available. But our eyes must be on fighting for the rights of all people to access to health care in 2024. And that means getting in the fight for a Congress that will make Roe the law of the land again everywhere in America. I have lived in an America where abortion is illegal. We are not going back, not now, not ever. And I want to introduce one of my partners, Lori Trahan, Congresswoman. Come up here and talk to these good folks. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here, not only to see the intensity of support for protecting women's rights here in Massachusetts, but also standing with an incredible uh, group of women, women leaders, who will not let this extremism come to our border. If the decision last week by an openly anti-abortion Trump judge is permitted to stand, millions of women, including so many here in Massachusetts, will be affected. And it is our obligation to stand up to this most recent assault on our reproductive rights. It is our duty to stop the overreach of anti-abortion extremists at our Commonwealth's border. And it is our responsibility to ensure that our daughters aren't forced to grow up with fewer rights mm -hmm. than every woman, than every mom standing here today. I I'm so grateful that we have strong, committed leaders here in Massachusetts, like Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Attorney General Campbell, President Spilka, Speaker Mariano, and so many others who are willing to take swift and substantial action today. And I look forward to continuing to work alongside Senator Warren, Whip Clark, Congresswoman Presley, and members of our federal delegation to support those efforts to finally make the Women's Health Protection Act law and to codify abortion rights for every woman in the United States of America. 
It is now my honor to introduce my esteemed colleague, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. I was conflicted, to be honest, about whether or not I would begin with a hello or good morning. Because this is another day in our country where we find ourselves reeling from another mass shooting. Mm -hmm. While on the same day, black lawmakers in Tennessee await their fate That's right. after being unjustly and undemocratically ousted from their cities, from their, from their seats. And another day with attacks on the bodies of women. These are truly unprecedented moments with extremist forces at work to undermine and attack our safety, democracy, and health care. But it is a good morning because we will out-organize, we will out-work, we will out-legislate their hate. I thank my partners in good on the federal level, Senator Warren, Congresswoman Trahan, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Attorney General Campbell, and Senate President Spilka, our esteemed colleagues and advocates for your partnership on this critical issue at this critical moment where we are navigating the burden of so many layered challenges. This is a dark moment, and I don't say that to be hyperbolic. I say that because we are living through a coordinated, decades-long attack on our health and our bodies. A coordinated attack which aims to dehumanize and misinform, and moreover, a coordinated attack that is already robbing far too many across the nation of their right to bodily autonomy. Forced birth. As a black woman, knowing full well the black maternal morbidity crisis that one in four black women die in childbirth or post-birthing complications, this is a matter of life and death. As the chair of the Abortion Rights and Access Task Force under the House's Pro-Choice Caucus, let me say it loud and say it proud, abortion care is health care. There is no shame in seeking abortion care. Health care is your inherent and fundamental right. There is no shame in having had an abortion, like the one in four women who are in your family, who are amongst us, who you know and love and worship with and work with. The only shame is that there are extreme forces at work to deny you access to that which is fundamentally your right. And that is health care. <laughs> Mifepristone is a safe and effective drug that has been used as a part of routine care for nearly a quarter century. That extreme white supremacist judge in Texas should take many seats, any seat really, <laughs> except one on a bench with a gavel in his hand. And while we are in a deeply consequential moment and the stakes couldn't be higher, the plan outlined today by the governor is exactly the type of bold leadership this moment calls for. And it will go a long way to keeping this essential form of routine health care accessible to Massachusetts residents. So we continue fighting at the federal level to affirm abortion care as a human right that it is. Let me say this. Damn, it is good to have leadership in the corner office. <laughs> Damn, it is good to have a governor who says abortion with her whole chest and understands what is at stake.
unprecedented leadership to meet an unprecedented moment. It is good to have an attorney general ready to wield the law in defense of the people. Yes. And it is a beautiful thing to have coordination at every level of government. For everyone who calls Massachusetts home, let me tell you, we will fight every single day for health care justice for you. We will fight every single day to protect your right to safe medical care. We will say abortion and we will speak with medical accuracy and precision and we will keep each other safe because when we fight, we win. And we will fight until we win. And now, I want to invite to the dais a crusader for justice, our Attorney General, Andrea Campbell. She's so bad. She's so bad. Then she put her sunglasses back on. And just, incredible, incredible, incredible. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, good afternoon. Yes, it may be a dark moment, but we are all here to fight. So it's a good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for covering, frankly, this critical announcement. Thank you to Governor Healy. Thank you to our Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for taking swift action to protect abortion access here in Massachusetts. I stand together with them and everyone behind me in this fight. Once again, we find ourselves responding to the latest cruel anti-science and anti-democratic attempt right. by a fringe group right. of right-wing extremists to curtail access to abortion. First, it was the Dobbs decision, a radical Supreme Court ruling that stripped millions of a federal constitutional right to abortion. The first time in the history of the court where a constitutional right was eliminated. And I remind folks, regardless of how they feel about this right to an abortion, if they can eliminate that right, That's right. Mm -hmm. in the face of significant precedent, all civil rights are under threat. Right. Everyone should care about this issue. Everyone should care about this issue. And now we stand here today following a ruling by a Trump-appointed judge in Texas who has recklessly substituted his extreme anti-abortion views for the FDA, which has one of the most rigorous medication approval processes in the world, a process based on science, not politics, not ideology. And let me be crystal clear, medication abortion is just as safe and effective today as it was 23 years, as it has been, I should say, 23 years. That's how long it's been on the market. Over 3 million Americans have benefited from this drug, a drug, by the way, that the World Health Organization has classified as essential medicine for people around the world. This judge ignored the decades of research showing that medication abortion including mifepristone, is safe and effective, and decided that the FDA got it wrong because that's what he wanted to do. His decision was based on ideology, not science, and certainly not the law. Well, that's not how the law works. That's not how science works. That's not how drug approval processes work. And this judge does not have the power to do it. So while we will absolutely fight back, and we will fight back against this ruling where he did not have the power to do this. It's important to name that. I want to make it clear. Medication abortion, including mifepristone, remains legal and accessible here in Massachusetts. And I, along with every member of my team, will do everything in our power to ensure that remains the case. And for providers and patients who are feeling scared and confused today, Know that all of us have your back. And if you have any questions about this ruling, please call the abortion legal hotline that my office in partnership with incredible partners, Reproduct Reproductive Equity Now, the Women's Bar Foundation, the ACLU of Massachusetts, 
and several incredible law firms in Massachusetts helped set up so that our folks could navigate these attacks. This hotline is free. It is confidential for anyone seeking to provide or receive care in Massachusetts, and it is not limited to Massachusetts residents. It remains a resource. So if you or someone you know has questions about this or anything else, please call that hotline, 833-309-6301, 833-309-6301. Today I am proud to stand in the sunshine with the Healy Driscoll administration, along of course with all the elected officials who work tirelessly on your behalf and all the incredible organizations, some of whom are represented here, some who are not, who are fighting every single day to protect you. Today's, announcements, today's announcement is an important step to advance the goals of the SHIELD law, the strongest, frankly, and most comprehensive law of its kind in the country. In the country, Massachusetts always and has always led, and it will continue to. It is one of the strongest in the country to protect abortion providers and patients who provide or seek care here in Massachusetts. And this executive order will ensure that providers and patients continue to access medication abortion, that malpractice insurers cannot penalize abortion providers on the basis of these attacks, and that our colleges and universities are at the ready to ensure these essential health care services are available to everyone. Massachusetts, all of us, we stand together to fight for you and to protect you. We're standing shoulder to shoulder today to say we are strong when we're united. And as Attorney General, I will use the full legal authority of the office to protect our residents, to ensure they have access to the full spectrum of reproductive health care right here in Massachusetts. And I will end by saying Massachusetts continues and always will be a beacon of hope. We are blessed to live in this state. It's incumbent upon us to take the responsibility and to fight for others who are not as blessed. So thank you all for the work you do. And it's my honor and privilege to turn it over to our Senate President, President Karen Spilka. Good afternoon. Some people are still. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Senate President Karen Spilka, and I am very proud to be here today uh, with all of these wonderful elected leaders, advocates, and so many people that fight day in, day out to protect the rights, the civil rights of all Massachusetts residents, and to stand up for reproductive freedom and, frankly, common sense. <laughs> I have said before that when all people of the Commonwealth have access to the opportunities to participate in Massachusetts economy as well as has, have the tools to succeed, then we all benefit from that. We are truly a Commonwealth. And I would argue that the most important and the most basic tool that people have is bodily autonomy. And definitely as part of that is basic agency over when and if they start a family. It just makes sense. And it is outrageous that we need to fight this fight over and over and over again. But we will, we will, we have no other choice. We will, you've heard it from others. It's amazing, it's outrageous that we have to continually argue what is scientifically sound against those with pure political agendas who don't care about what will keep us safe and healthy and our communities strong. It feels like this creeping political, extremist political agenda has overtaken common sense and overtaken our good public health. 
in so many areas, which is why we must all keep pushing back. And speaking of political agendas, it is also outrageous, and I say anti-democratic, for the tyranny of a few to dictate the decisions of so many. Hell, I say it's anti-democratic for one man, forget about a few, for one man, in this case one judge, to dictate what millions of women, William, millions of pregnant people and families can do. This is not how America is supposed to work. This is not our values and beliefs. This is not our America and what we stand for. We are lucky to be in Massachusetts with these folks that are here behind us standing strong. But what's strong, uh, we, this is not how it's supposed to work. And I say not today. It's not going to happen today. We also have the right to protest as Americans and so I'm thrilled to see this public, very certain and strong outcry here in Massachusetts and across the whole United States. And I promise that the Massachusetts State Senate, and I know the State House with the Speaker, my partnership, my strong partnership with the Speaker, thank you, we will stand together and continue to engage in this fight for justice as long as we have to. So I thank you, Governor Healy and the Healy Driscoll administration for your strong and quick action on this issue, this bold action, action. And thank you, UMass and the other organizations for our partnership, because that's what this will take, a partnership. And thank you to this very impressive coalition who gathered here today Thank you to everyone who is ready to keep up the fight, because we are in it together. Thank you. We're going to invite um, Mr. Speaker up to speak. And I just want to say one thing, um, and that is, you know, as governor, the team and I, we get to, to implement the laws. Attorney General Campbell gets to enforce and defend the laws, and she will. But understand that we are not here announcing this action were it not for the steps taken by the legislature, informed, of course, by the advocates and pushed by the advocates. And so I just want to say that UMass, these things don't get funded. These things don't just happen. Medication abortion on our state and public colleges and universities doesn't just happen because some governor says so. It happens because there are laws and there is a predicate set. And as your governor, I wanted to point that out because I am grateful for the work that everyone is doing, federal, state, and local. But with that, I appreciate everything that you said, Senate President, and I introduce uh, a good man in this fight, our speaker, Ron Mariano. Is that a shot? <laughs> uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> I want to thank the governor for prioritizing this important issue. It seems like it was another bright sunny day. We were standing here a short time ago and took action, an action that guaranteed the right to independent health care to every woman in Massachusetts. A, a negotiated bill that took about five minutes, uh, a record time for the two of us to agree on anything. Because we all understand how important it is to everyone out there and everyone behind us. I think we talked earlier about health care having changed for young women being born today. If we don't restore the right to fiscal, physical autonomy, it is troubling to me that women potentially 
could go through their lives without having the right to make a choice. It is anathema to everything we believe in. It is troubling to me that we're back here again. You heard the senator make a clarion call for activity in the election cycle. If you don't think anything's wrong with an America that has one judge in Texas making decisions for every one of you here in Massachusetts, we don't have a president who's running for his life from three grand juries, then we better take a harder look at how we're electing our people. It is amazing to me, if you watch any news channel and listen to the charges that are being made about our former president and the people that he appointed. This guy didn't get here and drop out of the sky. Trump put him down there in Texas. They put him down there because there was very little activity. And then the, Trump knew he could get away with any crazy decision he wanted to make, as witness this. So I, I, I re-echo the, the call to get involved in elections. We're going to be back here again if we don't. What's that old saying, uh, you know, how do you, if you can't figure out how to stop something, you might as well, but we're all crazy. We, we know what the solution is. The solution's pretty obvious. We just can't continue to elect these people. So with that, I'm going to end because that to me is the most important change I've seen in my lifetime. A, a Supreme Court that makes decisions based on political rationales rather than legal rationales. Judges that use their own personal pre uh, prejudices to make decisions. It's not where we want to live. It's not how we want to live. So let's go to work. Thank you, Senate, Senate President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce a champion and advocate for women's reproductive freedom, Boston Mayor Michelle Wu. We're here again at this very same podium with the very same rage boiling inside our bellies. I don't have the composure today to let all of my words out about that. I'm not going to give them that. I'm not going to talk about how sickeningly mad I am that we are here again. I'm not going to talk about how clueless it is for extremists who say they care about the sanctity of family to take away the very safety and health care and protections that make it possible for so many to map out their lives and protect their families. I'm not going to talk about how this is all a dangerous, destructive distraction from the real work that should be happening right. across the country. Right. When our young people are worried about losing their lives from mass shootings. Right. When cities are burning from climate change and we haven't gotten our act together to figure out what to do at the national level. When cities need help providing affordable housing for our residents, tackling the opiate crisis, getting the resources to fund quality education for all, this is a distraction, That's right. a life-threatening distraction. That's right. So here's what I want to talk about instead. To the residents of Massachusetts and of Boston, we got your back. Right. You are safe. You are protected. 
and we will always fight for you. And even more loudly, to the residents of other states across the country, you can vote, we encourage and will fight alongside you, but you can also move to Massachusetts. <laughs> To the students in high school who are making decisions right now about where to go to college, move to Massachusetts, yes. where our universities are standing shoulder to shoulder with elected leadership in fighting for you and protecting you. To the companies who are looking to fill vacancies and seeking workforce, move to Massachusetts, where your employees will be able to care for their whole lives. To the healthcare professionals yes. who swore an oath not to do harm and to save lives and are questioning why you are in this fight alone in other states, move to Massachusetts. <laughs> we welcome you and we will have your back every step of the way. And to all the women out there, to all who care about women and girls in your lives who might be thinking about how to start a family one day, or who are just trying to live your lives with full bodily autonomy, move to Massachusetts. <laughs> we are here to welcome all. And we are standing shoulder to shoulder with a governor and lieutenant governor and state administration who will take every step possible, with an attorney general who will turn over every letter of the law to create spaces for safety with a state legislature that got in front of all of this months ago, years ago, to make sure that we will always be at the front lines of safety and health. With a federal delegation, second to none, who will raise hell on every issue when it comes to protecting our residents. And with providers, community partners, businesses, every sector aligned to ensure that this is the best place to live, to raise a family, to be prepared for our future, we welcome you. Move to Massachusetts, where we are fighting for affordable housing, where we are fighting for schools to serve every single child, where we are ahead of the curve when it comes to climate and green infrastructure, and we are building the types of communities that everyone in our country deserves I am so thankful to live in Boston and to live in Massachusetts to serve alongside these incredible people. I want for everyone in the country to have this experience and we are going to fight for that. But until then, we welcome you to join us here too. Now it is my honor to pass the mic. It's my honor to pass the mic over to the Vice President of Medical Services for Planned Parenthood of Massachusetts, Dr. Danielle Roncari. Hi, good afternoon everyone. As an OBGYN, both at Planned Parenthood and at Tufts Medical Center, I will never move from Massachusetts, I will say, but I see patients at different stages of reproductive health, providing abortion care, treating patients managing miscarriages, and supporting patients experiencing second trimester pregnancy complications. Every day, mifepristone is a part of someone's care regimen. It's that integral to delivering the safest, most effective, and most compassionate reproductive health care to our patients. Today, mifepristone's approval is still intact, and Planned Parenthood continues to provide medication abortion as usual. The support from the Healy administration, thank you, will help ensure we have a sufficient supply of mifepristone and strong legal protections to continue providing the most effective evidence-based care to our patients. On behalf of so many other reproductive health care providers, I want to thank Governor Healy, Attorney General Campbell, and everyone up here for making it crystal clear that Massachusetts protects medication abortion and that you have our backs. Planned Parenthood is prepared to shift to a mesoprostol-only regimen should mifepristone become unavailable, but we should not have to. That's right. In issuing this decision, the Texas judge has willfully ignored more than 20 years of medical evidence, ignored the testimony of medical experts, 
It ignored patient stories about how access to this medication changed or saved their lives. And so just in conclusion, I want to thank everyone here um, and thank you for your support. And I want to introduce uh, Rebecca Hartholder. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rebecca Hartholder, um, and I'm the president of Reproductive Equity Now. And I want to start by saying that on Friday night when the decision came out, I had to cancel plans with my kids. And my eight-year-old looked at me and she said, did he do it? And I said, he did it. And she said, he's trying to take our rights away. And I said, yes. And she said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I have a whole bunch of friends who are really good at fighting back. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone behind me, state, local, federal leaders who only know how to do one thing, and that is fight back. Time and time again, these leaders demonstrate what is possible when we live in a state committed to reproductive freedom. And I want to give a special thank you to our partners at the ACLU and Planned Parenthood who have been fighting with us for a long time. A far-right Trump-appointed judge 2,000 miles away in Amarillo, Texas, is trying to usurp the will of the people and restrict Mifepristone access nationwide. And I want to be very clear that Judge Kaczmarek's decision has no basis in science, medicine, or the law. Mm -hmm. As I said to Senator Warren, he would have failed a Fed Courts exam in yeah. law school. Yeah. Mifepristone is a safe and effective and commonly used drug to end pregnancy. This ruling is a results-driven legal charade, and it is all part of an extremist mission to ban abortion in all 50 states. In the Dobbs decision, Justice Alito said, and I quote, the issue of abortion should return to the states. But let's be real. That was never the point of the anti-abortion movement. The mask is off. All Judge Kaczmarek is, is the anti-abortion movement's judge of choice. We should expect to see many more abortion rights challenges in his court specifically, because he is their green light for a nationwide abortion ban. Today, we not only protest the decision on the merits, and we do protest it on the merits, but it is also anti-democratic that the judiciary is beholden to anti-abortion, anti-science outcomes rather than the law. Today, Massachusetts is standing up and once again saying loud and clear, we are not going to take it. When advocates began to sound the alarm about the potential impacts that this case could have in Massachusetts, Governor Healy did not falter. She listened, she collaborated, and she got to work. And because of her commitment to abortion access and the extraordinary leadership of the University of Massachusetts, our state now has 15,000 doses of mifepristone on hand for those seeking medication abortion. Our providers will be able to stockpile this essential drug. And with the executive order, the provider protection law passed in July once again protects the provision of abortion care and says you may not reach into our commonwealth and attack our providers or our patients, full stop. And that is what it looks like to have a partner in the corner office. So I want to be clear. This is not the end of the anti-abortion movement's assault on our rights. The ending Roe v. Wade was an important step in the anti-abortion playbook, but it was hardly the first or the last. And thank goodness in Massachusetts we have leadership who's standing up and fighting back, not just for my kids, but for all of your kids. And I want to remind you, as the Attorney General said, the Massachusetts abortion legal hotline is open and ready to take your call. The number is 833-309-6301. Massachusetts stands for reproductive freedom and we are not going anywhere. And with that is my honor to introduce my friend, Kale Rose, the Executive Director of the ACLU of Massachusetts. Hi, good afternoon.
My name is Carol Rose. I'm the executive director at the ACLU of Massachusetts. And we've heard from these amazing leaders today. Can we just have a round of applause for the leadership in Massachusetts? Um, and especially to Governor Healy, who's really shown her leadership, to Senator Spilka, Senate President Spilka, and House Speaker Mariano, who really led the charge, and to our whole delegation for just being really extraordinary leaders and an extraordinary important time in our Commonwealth and in our country. Now, we've heard a lot today, and I'm your last speaker before questions. So what do we need to take away? First, abortion remains legal here in Massachusetts. The achievements and the ongoing work of the people who are standing before you, our elected officials, is making sure that it is going to remain legal here in Massachusetts, at least for the time being. But we have, we have some time and we'll be fighting. And no matter what happens down the road, our leaders and our, my fellow advocates with Planned Parenthood and Wren and so many other groups are going to continue to do this work to make sure that the people of Massachusetts retain their right to personal bodily autonomy. We are ready for the moment. As you've heard, people seeking abortion care here in Massachusetts should and can contact the free and confidential abortion legal hotline. And thank you to Attorney General Campbell for making sure that that happened. Thank you for that. The ACLU, we have offices in all 50 states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, and we are working across the country to ensure that we, the people, not Trump-appointed judges or self-appointed ideologues, are going to determine the future for our family and for our nation. And make no mistake, this ruling is just the latest attempt in a coordinated attack on women, on transgender people, and on families, with cruel disregard, indeed contempt, for how these rulings are going to take away abortion care and health care from people in disproportionately impacted communities, black and brown, indigenous, poor, and rural communities in particular. It's further in evidence that the anti-abortion extremists are seeking to outlaw reproductive health care across the country and that they're coming for Massachusetts too. I want to say to my partners up here and to everyone in the country that whatever comes next at every step of the way, the ACLU and our allied organizations will be with you in the courts, in the legislatures, online, and if necessary, in the streets. From Birmingham to Boston, from Mississippi to Massachusetts, we have your back. We won't stop until every person in this country can access safe and essential reproductive health care that all people need and all people deserve. Now, I'll turn the podium back to Governor Healy to take your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Many thanks to all the advocates, to our fabulous uh, federal delegation here today, to our incredible partners in the state legislature and governmental partners. Uh, we thank you all for, for participating in this and for the work we're going to do now and going forward. With that, I open up for questions. Does the governor explain how um, the purchase of the 3,000 doses will be administered or made available to other local health care providers in Massachusetts? Uh, we're going to make sure that that is what happens. And again, I really want to credit the University of Massachusetts for your partnership in all of this for acting so quickly to our Health and Human Services Secretary, Kate Walsh, to the folks in our governor legal, governor's legal office for working on the executive order that is going to enable all of this to be implemented quickly. So we'll work out the distributions. Uh, again, note that there are any number of hospitals and other health care providers who are also ordering doses as well. So for anyone out there in need of services, in need of care, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And nothing is going to change. We're going to make sure that we stay the course here in Massachusetts and ride this out. People in Massachusetts will be protected. And meanwhile, we may see more people appreciating the values and what this state and its people represent. What would you know, I guess, how that uh, network dissemination is going to happen? Is it going to be available in the coming days? I will tell you this. We'll make available any information as we know it. I will also tell you this. As I just said, nothing has changed. So this is an effort, you know, I'm somebody who likes to make sure that we cover our bases. And so when we were hearing talk of all this, the idea was stockpile and let's buy up whatever we need to buy up to make sure that people here or people who come here are going to be protected. And let's make sure that we do nothing to change what prescribers and providers here on the ground are doing because they shouldn't. And that's why we did the executive order. So the good news is nothing should change when and if something changes in terms of how we need to get things out. We'll let you know. 
No, I'm not concerned about litigation. Uh, you know, <laughs> look, I just want to be clear. I mean, this place, this is the foundation of our country's democracy. You know, this is bedrock. And if you come here to mess with our rights or our freedoms, we're going to take you on. We're certainly not going to stand for that. I, I say this to you as a former attorney general. I know the odds in this case. I know the legal landscape, which is why what this judge did is a sham. And I am not the least bit concerned about liability. I also respect... We're here in Massachusetts. We actually are home to the greatest life sciences, connections and collaborations in the world. We believe in health. We believe in science, right? Let's remember who we are. We also believe in individual freedom. And so, you know, now is the time for us to step forward and show who we are. But I am also confident that at the end of the day, we are not going to let hand-picked extremist judges who are looking to just simply exercise and further a political agenda undermine centuries of appropriate rulemaking in this country when it comes to our health and well-being, when it comes to scientific expertise and medical expertise. That's just crazy. I'm sorry? Do you think the FDA has the authority to simply ignore the Texas decision and do you believe it should? Well, we've had a lot of conversations with the Biden administration. I think the FDA is well situated to address this. Um, and we also have another decision coming out of the state of Washington, as you know. So right now, the Biden administration has appropriately appealed this. Um, and I would hope that the FDA continue to do what hundreds of millions of Americans rely on the FDA doing day in and day out. That is to make decisions based on the health and welfare of the American public. You know, we'll, we'll take whatever steps are necessary. We're going to do whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. We'll take whatever steps are necessary. Um, obviously, looking at the current composure of the Supreme Court, you know, we're not thrilled about what may or may not happen there. Um, but that's why today's actions are so important. And again, I am so grateful to our state legislature, to the University of Massachusetts, to other health care providers here in the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I am confident, too, in speaking with other governors around the country that you will see more and more states step up. The battle to ban abortion has been fought in the states. The battle to win reproductive freedom and a woman's right to an abortion will be won in the states. And that's what you see happening here. Okay. Sure. I just want to thank the governor. I'll just add, obviously, AGs across the, the country are working together to make sure that not only Massachusetts but other states can afford access to these critical reproductive health care services and medications for their residents. So in terms of the Washington case, we'll continue to follow it. The good thing about it is it's forced this issue to go to the Supreme Court, which is important and, and a significant victory. And what we're going to do is focus right here in Massachusetts on making sure our folks have access and their questions are being answered along the way. Um, I will just say this, there have been a number, a number, and I'm, again, grateful to our Health and Human Services Secretary, Kate Walsh, for all of her work on the ground um, in doing the outreach over the last several days, and to the Massachusetts Hospital Association. See, that's what people don't understand when they do things that seek to undermine the way we do things here in Massachusetts and the freedoms and the civil rights that we protect. They don't understand how we all work together and how committed we are in our values. And so... Um, I know that there have been many, and that's a wonderful thing. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. I'll stay here for a minute. Thank you very much.